Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 33, he said, in the world you will have tribulation. You will have troubles. You're going to have heartaches and hardships and sorrows. Now, he was preparing them for a time when he was going to be crucified. When he was going to be led away, when he was going to be crucified by enemies, and he was going to eventually rise from the dead, that's true, spend some time with the disciples, but then he was going to ascend into heaven. They'd no longer have his physical presence with them anymore. And they were going to be hated. They were going to be mocked. They were going to be dragged into court. They were in for a tough time. It was a rough road ahead of them. And Jesus is warning them. And he promised them trials and tribulations. I love, I love, I love Jesus. Because he, well for multiple reasons, but because he tells us the truth. And he told the disciples the truth. He said, you're going to. You're going to. Not you might. You're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulations. Listen, if you didn't already know it, let me give you the bad news. The world is full of wickedness. It's full of wickedness. And the innocent are constantly being abused. Whether you're someone, whether, you, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not, trials and hardships are coming. And you might be in the midst of it now. You might already be going through some difficulties. This world, this system of things is broken. And it's wicked. Sunday, July 28th, 2019, a shooting occurred at the annual Garlic Festival in Gilroy, California. At a Garlic Festival. It wasn't a nightclub. It was a garlic festival. 22 killed in El Paso, Texas. A gunman wearing body armor kills nine in Dayton, Ohio. Porn addiction is on the rise in all its destructive spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical side effects. Marriages and families are pulled apart. And materialism is running rampant. It's wicked. It's broken. It's dark. The disciples of Christ in the first century were going to face specific kinds of tribulations. But we face tribulations and hardships as well. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And of course, we're not, only, we're, we're not only assaulted physically, people committing all kinds of horrendous acts of violence like rape and murder, but we're being bombarded daily with images and ideas that strip us of our humanity. Isn't that true? We're, we're, we're bombarded with all kinds of images, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of things that are out there that literally strip us of our humanity. There's a song years ago. It said, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Then it went to go on to say, Let's do some things that animals do in animal kind of ways. It was saying that we're just animals. Literally saying we're just animals. Stripping us of anything that, that makes us different than the animal kingdom. Just animals, we're told. Mm. We see lies of the politicians and big business. We're told there's no God. And no hope for an afterlife. There's probably no God, this bus says. Now stop worrying about it and enjoy your life. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. But I don't know how you can be joyous. I don't know how you can be happy in this world unless you're sedated. How can you take joy? How can you be happy? When there's mass murders and killings and all of this running around. I mean, how... You must be taking drugs. You'd have to be. You'd have to be. Even the momentary pleasures this world offers are tarnished and fleeting. 
And then, of course, we add our own sin and wickedness into the mix. We struggle with life in one way or another, don't we? Don't we? Yeah, we struggle in life one way or another. So I guess we have to join in and take part in, and, and take what we can get. Abuse whoever needs to be abused in order to step on them, in order to have any victory in this, this world, right? Step on the weak and don't feel any compassion for those who are frail and can't give you any help. How can we be overcomers? How can we have victory over the world? Do we have to live like the world in order to have victory? Well, John's going to help us with that. John's going to help us with that. 1 John 5, 1 through 5. Look at the text again. John says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey His commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. See, those who are overcomers are those who live no longer for the flesh, no longer for self, but have become slaves of righteousness. That's strange, isn't it? That's strange because we see that the world is full of selfish people and selfism. It's all about me, myself, and I, isn't it? It's all about taking advantage of others to get ahead. You know that there's a number of books and articles out there that are trying to make selfishness, selfishness a virtue? Now they couch it in like self-love language and all that, but it's, it's selfism. The title of one book is The Virtue of Selfishness. The Virtue of Selfishness. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, so the man who leaves his, his, his wife and children to go off and find himself. Oh, he's not a bad person. Oh, he, he's, um, he's just loving himself. He's trying to spend a little bit of time. I thought, I'm sorry, I thought he was actually, you know, dropping the ball, shirking his responsibilities. Oh, it turns out he's a good guy. He should be applauded. Great job. Go for it. Are we that stupid? Are we this, that selfish? Which one? Both. Both. We are that stupid. We are that selfish. That's what the world is about. Hmm. Let's see what God has to say. Why don't we do that? That's probably a good thing, right? The creator of the universe, the, the, the one who made us. Maybe we should check in and, and, and ask him, is being selfish a virtue? We could ask God that question, right? Why don't we take a look at what he has to say? Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Oh, surprise! Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Huh, but in humility count... Did he just say that? Count others more significant than yourselves. Did you read that? Am I misreading that? Or does that say, count others more significant than yourselves? Wow. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. How can you be selfish and yet consider others more important or more significant than yourself. How can you do that? I don't think you can. I don't think you can do that. Uh. See, John says the ones who overcome are born of God. 
Those who are born of God have a power strong enough to resist and overcome all the powers of the world. Do you know that? Do you know that? That in Christ... You have a power. No, not of yourself. You have a power, though. Power that is able to overcome this world. And that includes selfism. Praise God, you don't have to be selfish. Do you know that? Christian? You don't have to be selfish. Those who are born of God have a power. God has given us the ability, the strength, Empowered by God to live above this world. We don't live like the world. We've transcended the world. We don't even fight like the world. You know, there, there are people at times who have gone out and shot abortion doctors in the name of Christ. Is that what we're called to? No, I, I think Jesus said something like, love your enemies, do good to those who persecute you. Yeah, see, we don't even fight like the world. We demolish strongholds with the knowledge of the gospel. We preach Christ crucified and raised from the dead. We live Christ crucified and raised from the dead. We live selfless. That's how we change the world. That's how we fight. See, we're different because we're born of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says this, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Such were, that was us at one point in time, but not no more. Such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You see that we're different? You see that we're changed? Empowered and raised above this world to sit with Christ in the heavenly realms. We're new in Jesus. Born again to a living hope. Born again to live holy and righteous lives. See, those who are overcomers are the ones who are born of God. The ones who have had their very nature, their identity changed. We were once like the world. Not only in the world, but we once lived like the world. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 6. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And listen, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's a present reality. Raised us up with him. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Right? We have been raised up, seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. We were ungodly and evil, but Christ changed us. That's what it means to be born again. See, we're different. We love as God loves and see things the way He sees things. Hmm. Now listen. You and I aren't great because we're great. 
We haven't overcome the world because of our own personal power and ability. Those who have victory over the world do so because of what Jesus has done. You and I, by ourselves, could never defeat this world. Could never overcome this world. But Paul says, in Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. More. I don't know how you can be more, but you're more. More than conquerors. Mm. You want victory over this dark world? You want victory over sin and death? You want purpose and meaning and the ability to stand strong in the face of evil? You want to rise above this wicked world? You want victory over your own sin? It's found in Jesus. Jesus gives us that victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. Victory is found in Jesus. John in his letter says, he says, faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. But what does biblical faith mean? Well, biblical faith means to trust. It means to put your whole weight down. Up north, I don't know if you do it around here, but up north, most of the lakes and ponds freeze over in the winter time, most of the time. And often you'll drive by a lake or something, and you'll see, these, these are vehicles on a lake. You'll see that. They drive right up on the lake. Now they're doing ice fishing and all that. But these people have faith that that ice is going to hold them, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't drive your car up on there. They have faith. What is that? They put their whole weight down in a sense, right? That's what biblical faith is. It's to trust. It's not to dip your toe. Uh, Jesus might be the right guy for me. You know, he might save. No, no, no. We put our whole weight down. We put our whole lives down. That's what biblical faith is all about. You truly trust and believe and are willing to put your whole life on it. We're men and women of faith. And faith is our victory. But it's not faith in faith. It's faith in... Jesus. Yes, it's faith in Jesus. And we put our whole weight down believing that Jesus is our all in all. We don't dabble. We don't dabble. We bet our lives on Jesus. We bet our lives, yes? Or no? Yeah, we bet our lives, we put our whole lives in Jesus' hands. What does it mean to have faith in Jesus? We trust that Jesus, who was he said, who is, he is who he said he was. We trust that Jesus died and rose on the third day to pay for our sins and trust that he will return and change everything, that he will usher in glory. We trust that he overcame the powers of darkness. He defeated sin, Satan, and death, and in him we have victory over the world. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only are we born of God, that is we have a whole new standing before Him, but we're holy and righteous. Not only are we people of faith, people who trust in Jesus, but we're also people who live for Jesus, and we live like Jesus. Our lives are wrapped up in Jesus. What was that kid's song that they taught at the uh, VBS? I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. Is that right? Did I get it right? You guys did a good job teaching the kids, because I learned it from the from the ones that came home. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. That's, that's, that's right. That's a true song. We are all about Jesus. Our lives are wrapped up in Him. Everything we say and do is meant to be a reflection of Him. 
It's not simply that we say we believe in Him, but we actually live for Him. Paul says that we have died with Christ and are raised to walk in newness of life. The old man has died, and we now belong to God through Christ. So it's not my will anymore. It's His will. John 16, 33, Jesus said, I have said these things to you that you may have peace. Hmm. I've said these things to you that in me, Jesus said, that in me you may have peace. Where is peace found? In Jesus. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In John, 1 John 5, 4 through 5. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that's overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't get discouraged. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And remember that you're a victor in Christ. Because regardless of what happens in this world, you're empowered to live like Jesus. You're called to live that way, and you're empowered to live that way. You're called to live like Jesus. And listen, this world really is not our home. We've got glory to come. We are victors. Right now. What well, doesn't look like it? What well, didn't look like God was doing something amazing that Friday when Jesus hung on the cross, was crucified. It looked like all hell had won, didn't it? What was God doing? See, things are not always as they appear. <coughs> Great victory happened at the cross. And listen, if you're in Jesus, you're a victor. Doesn't always look that way, but we don't. We don't base our lives on what it looks like. We base our lives on Jesus. We base our lives on what God has said. You are, you are, you are a victor. Continue. To follow Jesus. Continue to put Him first in your life. Continue to live out that victorious life that's found in Jesus. Continue to crucify the flesh. Continue to crucify those wicked behaviors. That, that's not you anyways. And you continue to live victorious in Jesus. You do that. You do that this week. We'll do that. And we'll continue to live for Jesus. Let's pray together.